This is Rohan Vaidya from CyberArk India. I am responsible for Cy CyberArk India and SARC region. I am the regional director for CyberArk. I have been in this business for about two years with CyberArk now. Uh, CyberArk is a cybersecurity company which focuses on privilege access management. Uh, we are the leaders in this space. We have been in this business for last 19 to 20 years uh, we provide privilege access management across all layers of IT be it your platforms servers network devices in the application space as well as a DevOps space anything which has an IP has a username and a password and these are administrative passwords and administrative usernames which are very very critical these are called typically the crown jewels of your IT and this is what CyberArk protects. Cybersecurity 10 years from now is, is a probably a billion dollar question. With everything now moving to internet, everything moving to something we call it the IOT, the IIOTs and there is going to be tons and tons of innovations which are going to happen which eventually are going to be connected in the world. Everything which has an IP address is going to be vulnerable for a cyber attack. Today people are more focused on the financial institutions because there is an instant gratification or there is a money which comes out of it for an attacker. But things are getting very different with cyber terrorism coming in, the manufacturing units, the thermal plants, the manufacturing, car manufacturing, or you have now self-driven cars. And you've got so many things from an automation perspective and the robotics coming in. There are so many things which are going to be a part of our daily life, be it in healthcare, be it in manufacturing, be it in, in, in a lot of service industry, which are going to be new attack surfaces for cyber attack. And as we go along, the cyber attackers are getting sophisticated. They are going to be utilizing AI. They're going to be utilizing machine language. They're going to be collaborating in terms of learning different techniques, what the new technology evolves. And those threats and that threat surface is going to keep increasing. A typical organization will have to start patching those vulnerabilities to make a stronger security posture. And with every evolving technology which the company is going to adopt, there are going to be threats which have to be tackled. Typically, you look at cyber attackers, they are considered to be the lazy guys. They want to do something where there are more loopholes, where they are easily able to penetrate the systems, they are able to take information out or really do things very very easily. Now the moment you have artificial intelligence as a tool available or as a concept available for a attacker, he is going to have far more ability to be able to really see which are the vulnerabilities available in places where he can easily attack. He will use the AI part to really start filtering out out of many many available surface areas which would be the easiest for him to penetrate. So that kind of gives him a better ROI of the effort that he's going to put in. And of course, he's going to go for the crown jewels, for an instant gratification, which helps him to really move fast. The second thought on the machine learning is again something which is going to help 
the cyber attackers to really think that if I am able to profile these users, if I'm able to understand and map their user behavior, I'm able to then start making an attack plan in terms of the vulnerabilities of those users. Every person who logs on to a computer has a pattern. And if that is something which I'm able to capture it from machine learning, then I'm able to really figure out what this person does or what his privileges are. And if I'm able to understand those privileges, then instead of going and just launching an attack, which is like spraying bullets, I rather be like shooting exactly the guy I really want to shoot. So if I understand that this is a person who has the most privileges, I rather go after him rather than going after 10 people who have less privileges and then doing a lateral movement, which is the current way of how the attack works. So with AI and with ML coming in, the level of sophistication which can really start getting on the cyber attackers is really going to be very very different. The interesting concept comes from big data. With so many incidents happening or breaches happening and so much of data being collected, big data becomes an extremely good tool for the good guys or people who are on the cyber security side who are either into the SOC or the security operations or people who are into the development side of products which are going to be defenders of the cyber attack. Now, if I'm able to correlate a lot of incidents across the globe, across industries, I can definitely have a better solution in terms of what the attack is going to look like and if I'm able to then be more responsive or I could actually be preventive in terms of having the attack when the attack vectors are coming in I'm able to identify that and stop them uh, incidentally CyberArk has a tool something which we call it as the PTA or the predictive threat analytics which is a kind of a tool which which kind of combines a correlation of different data points and is able to kind of look at what the attack vector could be and really stop an attack in between. A few years back, we all kind of imagined things to manage from either your phone or a, a dashboard which you could open a window of your car or your house or switch on the AC. I mean these were things which which we probably imagined it was only possible in um, in the Hollywood movies or it was something which Star Trek which was a tr which was like probably when we were growing as kids we probably imagined it's only happened there. But with IoT coming in we actually see those things happening. Uh, be it in your house automation, IoT plays a big role. Be it in industrial automation, IoT plays a very big role. And everything which is now connected with internet is exposed to a cyber attack. And from a cyber attack perspective, if I look at it, these are different devices where the usability of those devices is very much there. But the security part of it is something which people are not focused. Also, the mindset of most of, of us is that a cyber attack can possibly happen on a bank rather than a manufacturing company or a thermal power plant. But that's kind of changing. If, if I have to really create a catastrophe, in, it's easier for me to attack a nuclear power plant or thermal power plant or a manufacturing and cause a much larger catastrophe than attacking a bank and taking out a few million dollars or a billion dollars out. The, the attack surface on those IoT, uh, on those kind of uh, equipments is really, really different. And the impact is much more long lasting than just the financial loss. The cloud migration is something which is now becoming inevitable. I have been talking to a lot of CIOs over the last many years. 10 years back when I talked to CIOs of banks, it was always said we never are going to move to the cloud. 
then it came to a maybe five years back when the conversations were there they said yeah we kind of experiencing cloud but you know what we are only going to have our non-critical application setting on the cloud so they kind of opened the cloud doors with marketing with pr with a few of the campaigns that they ran or the crm a part of it but eventually now if you start talking to the cios they're going to tell you that cloud is the thing and they're just not going to be able to be compete in the marketplace if they're not going to be adopting cloud now there could be different forms of cloud it could be a private cloud it could be a public cloud it could be a, a hybrid combination but eventually is everybody is moving to the cloud now when you move to the cloud the the perception is that the cloud provider or the service provider for cloud should be responsible for all possible security which is there but it's like i would say it's an analogy of saying moving to a gated community the gated community the service provider for the gated community will provide you all the possible security till you get to your house it will probably also give you all the cameras all the security devices for your house but what happens inside your house the responsibility of managing that security is your is your responsibility and that's exactly happening with cloud so be it on azure be it on amazon cloud or be it on google if i'm going to be renting out space and hosting my applications out there or my infrastructure out there the usage of that in a secure way is a responsibility of the customer and not of the service provider and the cloud security is now coming into play i think we are over that conversation that cloud is not secure and there is because we will not move to cloud because it is not secure i think that conversation is more or less dying now the conversation is moving to how do i make the cloud secure so that i am able to migrate to the cloud as soon as possible and then i am able to utilize cloud benefits to my business so it is more of a business conversation rather than a technology conversation the future threats in cybersecurity is more now going towards the automation part of it and the robotics part of it so most of the processes are now getting automated and every time you automate there is some kind of a vulnerability which is going to come in because all automation tools will eventually require a credential which which needs to be authenticated if you look at any successful breaches which have happened the successful breach happens when the when the administrative credentials are compromised so if i am moving from a manual entry to an automated stuff which happens or an automated script which kind of authenticates i just pass on the vulnerability from the manual entry or manual processes now on to a script which is authenticating which kind of becomes even more difficult to manage so the whole aspect of automation in the future and interconnectivity are the new threats which will evolve and these threats are just going to keep evolving and increasing as the technology gets gets increased or evolves and newer technologies are introduced and newer automations and faster automations start coming in play